All right, welcome back, folks. Due to a bunch of scary stuff happening around the world right now, a bunch of people have entered into the gun world and you're now gun owners. So guys, welcome to gun ownership. And the purpose of this video is to give you kind of the next five steps. So we're gonna talk safety, comfort, training, all that jazz, get you squared away. But first, a word from our sponsor. Hi, right, what's happening, folks? I'm here with a new gun owner. This is... Buddy, what's up, bro? I'm from Pasadena. Congratulations, welcome to new gun owners. Thanks. Yeah, I got this bad boy from like Sportsman's okay. Guide. Whoa. It's okay. like a really Whoa. good... <laughs> all right, hey, congrats. Thanks. Let's switch you out until you're a little safer. Cool. First things first, bro. Get a little Pharrell on that bad boy. All right, next. All right, so now we have a plastic dummy gun, and we're gonna let That's you cool, hold man. this. That's instead. cool, man. That's cool. I like this. It's like a toy. Um, not a toy. So, in the interest of safety, my safety, we're switching Bodie out now for a uh, smart, banana. bro. That's smart. Very good. And so the first thing is is. Actually, just watch this video. We'll show them the ropes. <laughs> what we're going to do here is I'm going to have them prep this trigger to find the wall, and then I'm going to say the word easy. So Bodie ended up being the worst. I could not fix him. And that's tough, you know, this is all I do. I travel the country, I teach gun stuff, gun fighting stuff. I'm a former action guy. My name is John Lovell, founder of the Warrior Poet Society, and we teach this stuff, but Bodie was terrible. But you're not gonna be, you're gonna be awesome. You will peel a banana before you eat it. Uh, anyway, in this video, we're gonna tackle a bunch of stuff that you need to know now that you are a gun owner or you're about to be one. And that has to do with safety rules, operation clearing, unloading, handling, some general safety advice, some next steps. We're gonna tackle all of that in kind of a little bit of a roadmap, a 30,000 foot view, so we're not gonna exhaustively delve into any one of them. We're gonna give you a general thing and I'm gonna provide links down below that are other resources as well so that you can have kind of further learning in, by way of other videos that we have made. All right, so the first step I wanted to tackle is all the safety stuff. I did a video on this where we went a long time exhaustively into the universal firearm safety rules and then a bunch of other just range etiquette and how to operate guns around other people, specifically at ranges and in classroom environments. I'm gonna go ahead and provide links down below and the very last part of this video is gonna provide an in-screen link to that video so you guys can check it out. I encourage you to do this. So this will be a little bit more of a crash course for you. The universal firearm safety rules, there's four of them. And I'm gonna use this. This is not a gun, this is a piece of plastic and you're not here so don't worry about me pointing it at you because again, you're not here. Anyway, for the universal firearm safety rules, the first and foremost is always know the condition of your gun and always treat all guns as if they're loaded. This is a big fail safe. Everyone that's ever had a negligent discharge or accidentally shot someone, they all did it with a supposed empty gun. So for our intensive purposes, there's no such thing as an unloaded gun. And so we are always pretending, even if we know the gun's unloaded, we pretend like it's loaded and that keeps us from having any horrible disaster. The second thing is keep your finger off the trigger until the sights are aligned, the decision to shoot has been made. This is good trigger discipline and you'll see my finger is completely straight over the trigger guard and that's how it lives until I'm ready to shoot. And so um, I line up my sights and I'm ready to shoot. Then I can put my finger on the trigger and shoot, bang, 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 until I'm done. And then finger comes off the trigger and then I can come down and whatever, or put my gun down, right? So finger off the trigger till the sights are aligned, the decision to shoot has been made. If you don't pull the trigger, the gun cannot go off. Again, they're not little bombs waiting to explode. You have to pull the trigger to make this gun go off, right? All right, the third rule is never point a gun at anything you don't intend to destroy. And so uh, imagining there's a little laser coming out of this gun, you'd never let that laser cross any part of your hand or your leg or anyone else around. Never point your gun at anything you don't intend to destroy. Rule number four is know your target, what's beyond it, in front of it, to the left and the right of it, and beware, because bullets can go through walls. So if I pointed this gun at this wall and there was somebody in the room next to me, then I just broke that rule. I pointed a gun at somebody that I didn't intend to, and I didn't know what was beyond 
uh, my target, right? So those are the universal firearm safety rules. There's a bunch of other rules that apply as well. They're not the universal ones, but they're just generally good ideas. Those are covered in a different video. Again, I'll provide links down below. Give me five rounds in that black circle. Go. Tap rack. Get it up, get it up, let's go. All right, so the very first step was about safety. The second step is about operating your gun. So knowing our safety rules, we're not gonna ever break those. If our gun is down on the surface here, we'll make sure our finger is straight, hits the frame, and we can go ahead and pick up our gun as such. This is a training gun, so this is shooting blanks right now. Pretty darn fun, yay for that. Uh, and uh, we'll basically just go over our general safety and clearing procedures, right? So the very first thing is our gun is presumably empty. There, that means there's nothing in the chamber and there's no magazine uh, in the pistol grip. I'll take my magazine right here, which has bullets in it. And if I wanted to load this gun, what I would do is I would insert the magazine flush and then I'll grab the slide and you can do this multiple different ways. One is you can grab over the top like this and pull it back hard. Uh, or you can, uh, instead of going over the top like this, you can turn the gun sideways and grab like this, right? Uh, but either way, however you want to do that, you can go ahead and pull the slide back. And you want to do this violently so that when you pull back, your hand slips off of it. You don't want to go ch -ch and ride the slide forward. So do this with violence, ready, and right there. And that should chamber around. Now it's ready to shoot. This is blanks. All right, super fun. Now let's say I want to clear the gun out. Step one will be to drop the magazine. On the other side, there is a magazine release button. And what I'll do is I'll just push this in with my thumb. Observe, and it falls, groovy. Now there's still a round in the chamber. And so what I need to do is clear that out. The way I'll do that is I'll grab the top and again, I'm gonna cycle it violently and I'll see the round fall out. Now it should be empty, but we like to double check everything. And so part of clearing or loading, unloading a gun, we have our safety protocols, but we also have systems that help us clear out. So if step one was drop magazine, step two is rack the slide, but we'll do it two times as a double check. Very good. The third thing is now that I know that it is, uh, it should be empty, I still wanna put a visual check. So this is really like a third check. What I'll do is I'll lock the slide to the rear. And on the other side, on the same side that the magazine releases, there is our slide stop release. So what I'll do is I'll need to push this up. There's a little notch right there. And so my uh, job here is to push this up so I have upward pressure while pulling this back. And you'll watch this notch get back all the way up and then I'll let the slide forward and it'll rest against this piece. If I pull this down, the slide will go forward. And I, if I push up, it locks against it. This is step three. Step four will be I'll visually inspect the chamber and some people will add a physical check where they'll put their finger in there. So observe, I look in the chamber and I can put my finger in there if I choose. And some folks will add a double check where they look away and then look back just to have another look at the chamber. All right, to put it all together, looks like this. Step one, two, three, four, very good. That's how to clear your gun. Some people do it a little bit different, like I said before. The big thing is to have a system and stick to it. When it's time to clear a gun, you're not talking to anyone else, you're not watching TV, you're not doing anything else. You're ensuring that your area is safe, you're not breaking the universal firearm safety rules, and you go through this exact system every single time. So that was loading and unloading or clearing. Another way to load the gun is after you've been shooting a little bit, the slide will lock to the rear on the last round. So you'll have an empty magazine in there and it locks the rear. Now all you have to do to simply reload again is to drop the magazine and again hitting the uh, magazine ejection button, magazine release, drop that, find another magazine, insert it, and now you can allow the slide to go forward either by pulling it back and letting it go or pushing down on this button. And right now it is loaded again and ready to go. All right, so the very first step was about safety. The second step was about general operation. The third step is going to be about carrying and storage. And again, man, I could do just a whole 
bunch of videos just on any one of these steps. But again, I'm trying to make a real quick 30,000 foot view overview, a, a bit of a roadmap for you so you can expand these categories later, but at least they're placeholders and give you some general working knowledge of them specifically. So I want you to think of a modern pistol like a married pair. It's designed to go with a holster that's fit custom for it, right? This is a Kydex holster. It's really good. I'll have some uh, options down below. You don't want just kind of like a loose sock or a general purpose one. You want something that really fits your gun if you're going to be carrying it. This is designed to be carried in the appendix, which is straight down the front. And uh, if you don't know what you're doing, this can be dangerous. If you do know what you're doing, it is not dangerous at all. So uh, anyway, this is how I generally carry my gun. But uh, anyway, this is an appendix holster. There's other ways to carry it on the side, three o'clock or four o'clock or on an ankle or in a bag, all kinds of different ways. But really what I want is good trigger guard support and some type of retention in there. The thing about carrying is because gunfights come at you real fast, when you need a gun, you need it a few seconds ago. So being able to be out on target really, really quick is a good idea, but you also want to be safe uh, in all the other times, right? So anyway, carrying can be really important. Make sure you get a really good uh, holster. That's a big deal. And you got to fit it to your wardrobe and lifestyle. And I get that. So when we're not carrying, we got to figure out how to safely store our guns. Some of us have little kids and if they're three months old, you can just put it up high somewhere. If you have unruly young teenagers that are rebelling, you can't get away with anything, right? So anyway, you're gonna have to figure out how to balance accessibility for security and safety for little kids getting, getting hold of your guns. You'll have to figure that out. But regardless, you've got on your person for carrying. You can also get something of a little safe like this. This is a really cheap safe. There's all kinds of uh, little cases that you can carry as well that are a little bit more sophisticated and secure. You also have big gun safes and I'm gonna have some uh, recommended links down below in case you want to check out some of that stuff and see what works for you. But you want to secure some stuff. Other things, so if you're not carrying it and you're not locking it up, another way to handle your guns is to stage it. Some people do this by putting guns in sock drawers and by the way if a bad guy's ever gonna raid your house they're going to find it out of your sock drawer, at the top of the closet, or under your mattress. Pretty predictable places, so just know it's predictable to the bad guy as well, and your kids will eventually find that stuff. And so, uh, anyway, you got to be real, real careful about those things as well. But staging can become a really good way so that you are really quick, ready to respond to threats, somebody breaking in or robbing your house where you wouldn't have time to open up a safe find your gun, find your ammo, put it together, and then back in action. You don't have that kind of time. Uh, one way that you can help add it a, another layer of staging your gun is the gun is hidden somewhere high up and you're not worried about kids because you may not have kids or they're out of the house, whatever. But an additional level of safety that you can have is you can do something that I'll call aircraft loading. Now, aircraft loading is when I may have a full magazine in the gun, but there's nothing in the chamber. So for me to make this work, I've got to have my gun stashed. I can pick it up, but to be able to get a, a round ready to fire, I have to pick it up and rack. Now, for instance, if you have a four-year-old kid and they're not quite in the climbing stage and you got your gun way high up and they have no idea it's up there and you have your gun in this condition where you got rounds in the magazine but nothing in the chamber, it's going to be impossible for most four-year-olds to be able to rack the slide. Many of you will have trouble even racking the slide. So it can become an added layer of safety. Again, you've got to figure out what works for your house. If that just seems terrible and really unsafe, then it's probably terrible and unsafe for you, but not necessarily for everyone else. All right, now the fourth step speaks of future training. Understand pistol shooting is difficult as it is. You're gonna line up the sights, think you're good to go, pull off a shot and then boom, down and left. And you'll be like, what, this thing sucks. I can't hit anything. The sights must be off or I got a bad gun. And just know, no you didn't, the sights are fine. The gun is fine. You're just a terrible shooter. And it's gonna take some practice. You're not gonna immediately pick this up and be good at it. So be patient with yourself. Uh, learn and grow, you get some fundamentals, you'll start to find out about things like shot anticipation, which is the biggest reason you're missing uh, uh, from jerking the uh, trigger as well or not uh, aiming properly with your sights, 
all of these different things, we call them fundamentals of fire, fundamentals of shooting, uh, any one of them out of sync or out of harmony or wrong can have catastrophic uh, impacts on where your shots are landing, right? So may, make sure you understand that shooting can be hard and you probably want to grab some training after you've delved in to these other steps that I've already mentioned. After you get just general marksmanship stuff and you can hit what you're aiming at, appreciate the fact that bad guys are ambush hunters, which means they're going to come out of nowhere. Uh, it's going to happen in a very short amount of time. You're going to have to draw real quick and be able to shoot low percentage shots sometimes. And so that means you've got to be able to be fast and accurate in, in while you're freaking out and maybe low light environment, shooting one handed while fending someone off with one hand. And so the bar keeps getting higher and higher. And I don't want to overwhelm you right now. I just want to let you know that there are steps that we're just going to be on a gentle journey toward proficiency in and don't just buy a gun thinking now that I've got this gun, I'm going to be safe because that's not true. That's a false sense of security. So this is your public service announcement knowing, guess what? You'll need some training down the line. So make allotment for it. Step five, I just wanted to cover some general wisdom and I'd say, hey guys, don't be in a hurry to accidentally do something terrible. Take it slow. There's nothing in the world wrong with that. Uh, don't be afraid to ask local instructors or people who are further down the line from you. If they're doing anything that's contradicting my universal firearm safety rules that I already conveyed to you, they're amateurs. They don't know what they're doing. They're talking a big game, but they're unsafe. Stay away from them. But if they're good, they're probably a good resource to help. Uh, walk you through those first few steps. I care a little bit less about what gun you've got. That's not the thing. It is the Indian and not the arrow, so to speak. And so it's not the gun's fault. It's not the sight's fault. You don't have to go out and buy a whole bunch of stuff and upgrade a bunch of stuff. You really just need good practice and some knowledge and some learning and some time as well, right? I'd also add, check out some of our other videos because we have all kinds of good stuff on concealment and gunfights and uh, product reviews, gun reviews. All right, the last part of step five, I want you guys in the comments to fill it in. What did I miss in this general 30,000 foot overview for new shooters? Offer some encouragement. Let's not make everyone freak out in their first few days of gun ownership, but let's uh, revisit the comments. Guys, make sure you subscribe to this channel and toggle the notifications bell to all so you actually see when we upload videos for you. Check out our old playlist as well. Lots of invaluable information there. Comment, uh, uh, share, I forget all the things. <laughs> Thank you channel sponsor, Train Hard, Train Smart. We'll see you next time.